Yo, what's up guys? It's King Sean here and the first unofficial death chart has been released and in today's video I will be breaking it down but before we get to it if you guys are new to my channel leave a like down below subscribe tell notifications I'm on the to 4k subs if you could hit that sub button I'd really appreciate it and with that out of the way let's get straight into the video all right so this is our death chart this isn't the whole thing it's just the offensive dev chart I'll scroll down to get to the defensive dev chart once we're done breaking down the offense but first things first our starting quarterback is Jaden Daniels uh, Dan Quinn announced it in his press conference before the actual dev chart released and it's pretty obvious you know he's going to be our quarterback one day one week one it's just a matter of time when we you know announce him as our starter and I feel like we'll probably announce him after uh, our first preseason game against the Jets or maybe the joint practice against the Jets we shall see but Jaden Daniels he's going to be our week one starter and obviously behind him as a backup quarterback Marcus Mariota QB3 Jeff Driscoll and then QB4 is Sam Hartman if I had to guess I feel like each quarterback will get at least one quarter against the Jets because Dan Quinn even said in his press conference he didn't say it exactly but he basically said that Jaden Daniels he's going to get you could say more playing time against the Jets in joint practice than against the Jets in a preseason game with them, which makes sense because the joint practice is going to help Jaden Daniels more than the actual preseason game. So, um, at least in my opinion, the, the, the game will help him a bit, but the joint practice will help him a lot. So, that's basically what Dan Quinn was trying to say uh, when he said that right there. Now, moving on to the running back position. Obviously, B. Robin and Eckler are starting running backs. Behind them, you have Michael Wiley, uh, Chris Rodriguez, Jeremy McNichols, Austin Jones, It'll be very interesting to see who gets that running back three spot. If I had to guess, I think it's going to be between Jeremy McNichols and Chris Rodriguez, but we'll see who wins that battle right there. Definitely a battle to watch during preseason and through the remainder of training camp as well. Now on to wide receiver. Obviously, you have Terry McLaurin as your starting wide receiver, wide receiver one. Across from him, Jahan Dawson, your wide receiver two. I know y'all saw the brand now you can use. Us and the Steelers are reportedly out on him, and then the Browns and Patriots are still in on him. Uh, the, the 49ers have made um, offers with them. I'm pretty sure they've gotten the foundation of a trade done with them. Now it's just up to Ayuk and his team to figure out a contract with each one of those teams. So we'll see where he goes, uh, but we're out of the equation at this point, so it's what it is. Um, but at wide receiver three in the slot, Olamide Zacchaeus, which is very interesting. Um, I thought it was going to be De'Ami Brown or um, Luke McCaffrey at wide receiver three, but it's Olamide Zacchaeus, which I don't mind. Olamide Zacchaeus, he's a pretty solid wide receiver three, wide receiver four. He was pretty good with the Falcons a couple years ago. Didn't do too much with the Eagles this past season, but I think he did have like a touchdown or two, which is pretty solid. So Olamide Zacchaeus, he should be a solid wide receiver three for us, maybe four if Luke McCaffrey or De'Ami Brown steps up, but I don't mind Olamide as our wide receiver three right now. And then as for tight end, Zach Ertz, obviously our tight end one. John Bates, tight end two. Ben Sinnott, tight end three. And then Cole Turner, tight end four. So, uh, yeah, Ben Sinnott as our tight end three. I feel like he's our tight end two right now, but we just have John Bates ahead of him because I guess he's a blocking tight end. But uh, Ben Sinnott, he struggled a little bit throughout training camp with drops, but he has done good at, um, you know, with contested catches. That's actually one thing Dan Quinn said in his presser that he's been very impressed with Ben Sennett's contested catch ability so that is really good to hear um, so hopefully he can fix that drop issue and if he does I feel like as the season goes on he will get more and more snaps and eventually become our starting tight end um, taking over Zach Ertz but that's why we brought in Zach Ertz to help you know coach up develop uh, Ben Sennett Zach Ertz is very important to Ben Sennett's development in my opinion and then onto the offensive line, this is very important right here. Brandon Coleman, starting left tackle man. That's super, super good. Um, he's been impressing in training camp so far, so it's super um, good, super nice to see him, you know, getting that starting left tackle job. Well, it's just unofficial, but he should get the starting left tackle job for week one. And then Nick Allegretti at left guard, Tyler Biosch at center, Sam Cosme at right guard. And then probably the biggest question mark on our offensive line right now is right tackle. Andrew Riley is our starting right tackle right now per this unofficial depth chart. Now, we could go with Trent Scott or Cornelius Lucas week one. We're not sure. We'll see. Maybe, you know, we'll see how, uh, you know, they perform during preseason and through the remainder of camp. And then we'll decide who will get that right tackle spot week one. But right now, it is Andrew Wiley. And then 
you have Trent Scott and Brandon Daniels behind Andrew Wiley. Behind Brandon Coleman, you have Cornelius Lucas and Alex Ankenbulu. Behind Alec Gretti, you have Chris Paul and Mason Brooks. Behind Tyler Biotis, you have Michael Dieter and Ricky Stromberg. And then behind Sam Cosme, you have Julian Good-Jones and Ricky Stromberg again. So yeah, Ricky Stromberg, he can play both center and guard, so he kind of has that versatility right there. So that is it for our offensive depth chart. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, you're starting four defensive linemen are Cleveland Farrell, Dorrance Armstrong at defensive end, and Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen at D-tackle. No surprises there. I know that Cleveland Farrell and uh, Dante Fowler Jr. will rotate in and out a lot, as well as uh, KJ Henry. You can throw him in the mix. And Jamin Davis. Jamin Davis actually has been doing a better job at um, edge rusher. His development has gone a bit better. It has improved, um, which is really good. I noticed that on Sunday as well when I went to practice. So it's good to see his development at edge rusher improving steadily, slow and steady. But we'll see how he performs against the Jets tackles in, their pre in our preseason game with them and in our joint practice with them as well. Well, our starting linebackers, obviously, Bobby Wagner, Frankie LeVu, and then Jordan McGee and Anthony Pittman are backing them up. I feel like those guys, those four guys, are going to make the roster. Anthony Pittman may be, not be a lock right now because I know we got Mikhail Walker as well and Keandre Jones and other linebackers. But Anthony Pittman, he's a really good special teamer and, you know, provides really good depth at linebacker. So I feel like he prob I feel like he will make the roster, but we shall see how he performs throughout the rest of training camp and in the preseason as well. Our cornerback, Frankie LeVu, I'm not Frankie LeVu, Mikey Sanders, so sorry. He's our starting slot cornerback, which was to be expected. Backing him up is Noah Igbenogany and Caillou Blue Kelly. We'll see if those two guys make the roster. Probably not. Maybe Noah Igbenogany makes the roster, but we shall see. Uh, Benjamin St. Juice, Michael Davis, star starting outside cornerbacks, and Emmanuel Forbes is behind Benjamin St. Juice on this depth chart, which is a bit of a surprise. I've heard some really good things on Emmanuel Forbes, but maybe, you know, just having him there because the competition at cornerback is super strong. And I know Michael Davis and Benjamin St. Juice, they've been making some good plays in camp as well. So I know the competition is strong. So maybe Forbes just got to, you know, work harder um, and keep showing, keep impressing and showing why he deserves to be one of our starting outside cornerbacks. And hopefully, you know, we're going up against the Jets in joint practice this week on Thursday. So, you know, they got a guy like uh, Garrett Wilson, Malachi Corley over there, Mike Williams. So th that's a good test for, you know, Emmanuel Forrest to show why he deserves to be one of our starting outside cornerbacks. So we'll see how he matches up against those guys. And obviously he's going to play in our preseason game against the Jets as well. Not sure if the Jets will play any of their starters in our preseason game. But we shall see. And then at safety, you have Jeremy Chin as a starting strong safety. And then Quan Martin as our free safety. No surprises there. Derek Forrest backs him up. Well, Derek Forrest backs Jeremy Chin up at strong safety, which is a bit of a surprise because I know uh, Derek Forrest has been running with the third team a lot. Um, I, I think I thought they were going to have a guy like maybe Tyler Owens or Jeremy Reeves over him. But I guess not. Jeremy Reeves is backing up Quan Martin um, at free safety. And then Percy Butler is backing up. Of Jeremy Reeves, he's our third string safety, and then Dominic Campton is our third string strong safety as well. Moving on, finally, special teams. Trustway, he's our punter. Ramiz Ahmed is ahead of Riley Patterson right now on a depth chart. We'll see, you know, who wins the kicker competition in a uh, preseason. We won't really know until after the preseason um, to see who wins that kicker competition. Long snapper Tyler Ott, and then at kick returner, it's Noah Igbenogany. And at punt returner is Jameson Crowder. That's very interesting that Noah Igbenogany is our kick returner. Haven't really heard a lot about him from kick returner, but maybe he has been impressing behind the seeds. So that's why, you know, they have him as our starting kick returner on this depth chart right now. One thing I would like to mention before I end off today's video is how much newness we have on this roster. I mean, if you look at this depth chart, we have so many new guys at each position. Like at cornerback, we have Michael Davis, uh, Mikey Sanders still at strong safety. We have Jeremy Chin. Linebacker, Bobby Wagner, Jordan McGee, Frankie LeVou, quarterback, obviously Jaden Daniels. On the offensive line, we have Brandon Coleman as our left tackle, Tyler Biotis as our center, and left guard, um, Nick Allegretti. Uh, who else do we have? We just, I mean, as slot receiver, we have Olamide Zikis. I mean, we, just, we have so much newness on this roster, uh, which, you know, is a good thing. I mean, we turn over this roster like crazy. I mean, I know Adam Peters in his first press conference, he said he was asked, you know, how he feels about this roster, and he had to take a pause for a second. Um, and then he answered the question, like he said, we have some guys on this roster, but 
it, we're going to have to, you know, turn over this roster in a drastic way. And we did. We added a lot of new guys. And, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy for this change. It's a new, whole new regime, whole new team. This is not the same old Washington, like Rio said. Shout out to him. I watched his um, Def Chart video. He mentioned that this is not the same old Washington. Um, it's a different Washington. It actually feels different because it is different. So I just wanted to mention that before I ended off today's video. But that is it for the Def Chart video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, don't take too much into this. It's our first unofficial Def Chart. It will change in the coming weeks or so. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe, turn on notifications. Like I said, I'm on the road to 4K subs. If you could hit that sub button, I'd really appreciate it. And other than that, it's been King Sean and I'm out. Peace.